Welcome back to the Brunswick Gold Crown build series and this is episode three and then every episode that I've done so far I've started off with talking about something that's awesome about the gold crown one now this episode I'm gonna do the opposite I'm gonna start off with talking about yes the cushions and one of the downsides to a gold crown one now I'm gonna show you a lag right here because it just is an example of why cushions are so important and why having them play consistent and perfect is super important now what's the problem with the gold crown one well the actual Monarch cushions, as I said in an earlier episode, don't have an exact 100% perfect uh, um, replacement for them. And everyone puts K55s on them, which is okay. Uh, but the problem is, is you do kind of need to either adjust um, the angle in which they mount, which would mean that you have to router or sand the mount surface of the wood to be the new angle you need for the K55s to fit correctly. Because the problem is, the top of the cushion right here is actually a little bit longer on a K55, which actually shortens up the playing area of the table. And on top of that, the bevel on top of the cushion is different. Uh, that bevel is a little bit different on a K55 as opposed to the Monarchs. Now, it doesn't really make that big of a difference. Right here is where you would have to mount the cushion. You have to change that angle. Now, putting K55s on will play phenomenal. And most, if not everyone, would probably not notice. But while my Monarchs are still playing pretty good, I'm going to stick with them. And we're going to make them work and uh, just go from there. And maybe down the road, I'll end up changing them. Anyway, let's get into the rest of this build series episode. All right, so next on the to-do list, um, this rail's not in terrible, terrible shape. I'm gonna wash it down with a little bit of uh, dish soap and warm water. Just scrub it as good as I can, get as much dirt out of it as I can, then try a couple different polishes that I have to see how we can get this from my good turn out. All right, so we cleaned it with the uh, soap. I got a little bit of automotive, uh, like a uh, scratch remover on there just to try. Just gonna hit it real slow with the buffer, see what happens. I don't know how good this video is going to be from over here. I'll try to zoom in when I edit, but if I put it on the table, it'll probably shake like the last video. All right, now I'm just gonna hit it with a little bit of wax. Now it looks better. I'm gonna keep working on it. I mean, obviously it looks way better than that, <laughs> which is what we started with. And we now have that. So we're gonna keep, uh, we're gonna keep working that same combination. I'm gonna probably maybe, I'm afraid to flick anything up against the edge of this and cracking or chipping anything. So I'm gonna probably just keep going with what I'm doing until we get something that looks uh, better and better. I'll keep you updated though. All right, so I did that same process one more time and uh, worked out more and more scratches. And uh, as you can see, what a huge difference that made. So I'm gonna do that to the other five. All right guys, so I've decided to end episode two right here. We polished out the corner irons and things like that. We polished out one rail top. I'm um, getting ready to uh, move on to some other stuff. We'll go out and look at the paint real quick, how it turned out. It turned out pretty good actually. Hopefully there's not too much wind. to my secret sauce that I keep talking about. It's for on the cushions to preserve the cushions. And uh, you just put it on with a paper towel and I'll take a quick video of that. 
All right, guys, here we go. Let me know in the comments what you think this stuff is. And if you think the people have been doing this a long time or not. But that's it. You do that once, at least once, uh, each recovery. Let me know in the comments. All right, found our first problem. I could not get this trim piece to sit correctly on the edge of this end rail. No matter what I did, so I had to take it off. And it looks like it's along the way somewhere, that piece of wood broke off of there. So I'm gonna mix up some two-part epoxy and I'm gonna epoxy it into place and, uh, and see how good that does. If I have to, I'll put a little Bondo in places, but I think just some uh, real good five-minute epoxy will hold that in place real well. All right, so mixed up some five-part epoxy, or two-part epoxy, five-minute cure, glued that back into place. I'll let that sit until it hardens and then trim it up a little bit with a uh, sanding wheel on a Dremel. Get that baby looking fresh and ready to go back on so that that'll sit nice and fresh with the rail top. All right, what we're working on now is I had to uh, re-glue the end of that cushion a little bit, but then we're gonna, in the side pockets, reuse the factory facing. And I'm gonna move it out a little bit and then I'm gonna palm sand it uh, to where the cushion progressively gets thinner as it gets back to the mouth of the pocket, leaving as wide as possible on the tip and thin as possible in the jaw. And then we're gonna put this quarter inch shim over top of that. And that's how we're gonna uh, slightly change the angle a little bit of these side pockets just a touch. They are gigantic side pockets. Uh, now for the corner pockets, uh, they're actually not that small. So I'm gonna remove the uh, small facing that comes on uh, the, the gold crown one and replace it with this and that should give us but right at like uh, four and a quarter maybe just a touch under four and a quarter inch corner pockets which won't be bad so anyway that's what I'm working on now and if you look after I re-glued that old facing onto this side and I tapered it kind of with the palm sander and I got that tip looking nice and clean and then once I put on the new one, you see how it changes that angle just a little. Uh, once that's all glued up tight, it'll really change that side pocket angle enough that it'll take it from that old school kind of Brunswick look to like into the newer style of table. Um, and you're gaining a little bit of facing here that will kind of make certain shots like real close to the side pocket banks play a little bit funny, but at the end of the day, I think that's less important than having a pocket that accepts balls uh, a little bit more like newer style tables. But anyway, that's how I do that. Okay, now another good fix I like to do when restoring or even recovering a pull table for that matter is filling these holes with a little bit of something. And that's actually exactly how we're gonna fix these screws that backed out of the wood a little bit. We're gonna pull the screw out so that you're left with a bare hole and you just pour a little bit of wood glue and you snap off toothpicks down in that hole. We'll try to get one filled here and you can kind of just see what I am talking about. probably get more. Oh yeah, we're doing a bunch of holes with that dump. So you just break it, then put more in and break it. Like so. That one doesn't want to stay in. I got way too much I got way too much glue here guys. That was a mistake. I should have used the tripod. That one actually has enough glue on it that I can just do that with it. No wonder I need more glue. But you get the point. You, you pour some wood glue down in the hole and you continue to just snap off toothpicks like so. If you look, that one's actually got plenty of wood in it now. And when you run a screw down into any one of those holes, the threads will pick up that uh, toothpick and it'll make a nice tight uh, screw hole now. All right, so I just cleaned up this one that had the crack, the piece that was completely off, and I cleaned up the glue on both sides. You can see it looks pretty good. 
on there real strong. So that should get us to where we need so that that, uh, that trim piece looks nice. All right, so we got the uh, thick quarter inch shims. We got those drying with the contact adhesive uh, on each and every rail. They're gluing up nice, hopefully. If anything, you might just have to put a staple or a little tack nail or something in them sometimes, but for the most part, they are looking nice. I'm gonna have to put a little silver paint behind that emblem though. Uh, but what I moved on to working on next is cleaning up the slate edges and then I'm gonna have to start sanding on the top of the slate just a little. But all I'm doing here is, is just going along and getting all the old Bondo and all the old uh, uh, beeswax and stuff out of the seam just to get it ready for you know being done. I'm actually gonna try something new on the uh, slate seam, just because this is not gonna be super controlled out here. It'll be a little bit heated, but not like uh, very warm. So I'll, instead of going with beeswax or regular Bondo on the slate seams, I'm actually gonna try to use like the fiberglass infused Bondo, something super strong. You'll see, uh, we'll, we'll get over that when we get to that point. But yeah, that's what we're doing. Cleaning up this slate, getting it ready. All right, here's how I'm gonna make sure that these get nice and snug, because these are crucial for how the table plays, how the cushions in general play. So I'm filling these holes in, uh, just like I did uh, right there for the slate screws. I'm doing the same thing here for these rail bolt screws. Just snapping off some toothpicks in there to give it a little bit of extra wood to bite. And then I'm just running the screw right in on top of it like that, and it bites so much harder.